Hey there guys, it's uh, not been a while since I've done a review, but as you notice, I haven't gotten a Civil War review up yet. That's because I really wanted to get this out as soon as possible before Tuesday when Uncharted 4 launched. I'll get the Uncharted 3 review out sometime, but it's not going to be before Uncharted 4 at this point. I'm sorry about that, but that's just kind of what it's going to be. However, guys, I am now going to be reviewing today the second in the uh, trilogy, or hand, which will soon not be a trilogy anymore, series, the Uncharted series, and that is Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. Without further ado, let's get into this thing. So this game starts out literally in probably one of the best opening sequences I've ever seen in a video game, in which Nathan Drake wakes up, and you're in this train car that is hanging off of this cliff, and you have a wound to your abdomen, and Drake is just like struggling to like hang on to this train car and climb up it and get up before the entire thing goes crashing down and it is so suspenseful and tension filled it just is amazing and then of course he has to get through a few other enemies and whatnot until he eventually finds this uh, dagger of sorts and then we go and we flash back and we realize this is f this is forward in the game this is like in a different tarp in the future of the game and we're going back to where the actual beginning of the game is now in which Nathan Drake uh, runs into two old friends one friend named Harry Flynn and an old ex-girlfriend named Chloe and they request him to get uh, information about this lamp that Harry Flynn Flynn's a uh, boss wants to wants to have because of what's inside because of I think what's inside of it I'm not sure if they knew that at that point but they decide to infiltrate this Turkish museum to go and get this old Mongolian lamp that supposedly belonged to Marco Polo and they get there they smash the lamp they find a map inside and they realize that the map leads um, to Shambhala and they decide, oh yeah, we'll take we'll take this map and get the treasure for ourselves and everything. But of course, Harry Flynn, he's British, he, and he decides, <laughs> yeah, I know that sounded really stereotypical, but and he decides to betray uh, Nathan Drake and getting him locked up in a Turkish prison until Victor Sullivan and Chloe come and they get him out like a few months later or so, and they eventually. Uh, do all this uh, eventually there's more stuff that happens in the game which I don't want to talk about right now in story and everything and it's just fantastic I will talk about it later though but that's basically the main story of the game Drake is trying to uh, get to Shambhala before this evil warlord named Lazarevich that Harry Flynn works for and uh trying to find this stone called the Chintamani stone that is said to grant immortality and everything. So, you know. The first thing I really want to talk about is the characters. Nathan Drake, Elena, Sully, all of them are like basically the same as, you know, you would expect from the last game. If you watched my Uncharted 1 review, you know that, and I just don't want to go into detail about that right now. Uh, then you have some of the new characters, like Chloe, who is a really... Uh, she's like really uh strong and independent woman of course it's not in your face <laughs> that's not in your face at all and she really and the multiple times she double crosses you in the game it's kind of like jeez what the heck was that about hey and sometimes it really works out for her character though and which she really it's hard for her to like double cross Nate even though she wants to help him at the same time and at times that's the only way she can keep her cover though even if it's a bad thing for other people you see how selfish she is when uh at one point when Elena's cameraman Jeff is like critically wounded and she decides uh, that they should leave him even though everyone else wants to make sure that he gets out alive and <laughs> then there is Lazarevich the main villain of the game and oh my gosh 
that that's what I'm talking about, Naughty Dog. Especially compared to like the last villains of the last game, Lazarevich is so much more memorable, so much more brutal, so much more evil. You just sense the evil coming out of this guy, and he really works as the main villain of the game. Harry Flynn working as another villain of the game is very cool too. He has he's very charismatic, and he's very um, <laughs> he's freaking me. He's awful. He's an, like an awful person. And he just and those two characters are worked out marvelously as well. Uh, you have some other cool character interactions. One with a German, an old German uh, soldier, and one with a Tibetan native named Tenzin, who is, despite not understanding what he's saying, he's pretty funny. I really liked his character as well. And that's really all the characters that there's that's worth mentioning in the game, at least. And they all were pretty good. Music and sound are more or less the same as the last game. Music sounds like the same soundtrack, of course, that you got in Uncharted 1, only like adhering to the different environments that you were actually in in the game. Sound, uh, voice acting overall sounds great. It sounds amazing. All the voice actors did a really good job again. Um, there was a uh, lot more I thought some of the sound effects um were really vamped up especially for some of the scenes that you get in the game with how um how epic and cinematic they were that uh, sound effects really worked out the guns every, everything sounded good everything sounded good I won't get into the minor details about that of course the graphics are vastly improved from Uncharted 1 uh there's no more of this really like too solid clean feeling uh, the an the all the animation on the characters on the facial on the faces and everything it all looks gorgeous the environments and set pieces and everything are phenomenal they look amazing um, from like the mountainous snowy areas to the urban city areas like all the and all this different stuff ancient temples all that looks gorgeous it all just is very pleasing to the eyes especially on the uncharted um nathan drake collection in which they ma master mastered it remastered it for like 1080 60 frames per second you know it all looks amazing like it should and then of course we have to talk about the gameplay and now while overall gameplay wasn't exactly really that different he, they had a nice formula get the guns shoot the bad guys take cover all of it is just the same as it was before and it's really nice like that what they did improve on though was stuff like the platforming the platforming felt a lot smoother in this game it's not so rigid anymore it feels like you can that you're like Woo, you're smooth you're, oh. <laughs> you're going to the uh you're going to that next platform. Sometimes you feel like you can just barely make that jump and then you make it. It's awesome. It feels great. It feels natural. And some of the areas that you climb around are so much bigger in scale now. And it just feels like you're going into these really cool ancient places and doing this stuff. And it's really awesome. Uh, another thing that was improved upon the original was the stealth mechanic. Now, if you played the original Uncharted, you would know that stealth was crap. Uh, enemies could hear you. You had to be in a specific air spot right behind an enemy in order to stealth take him down. And if you weren't, then you could not do that. Uh, in this game, you could. You could literally take out an entire area stealthily and not get caught the entire time. It's possible to do that in some of the areas in the game. And it really feels um victorious when you're able you really feel victorious when you're able to do something like that another thing that was really vastly improved were the puzzles the puzzles they this time you actually had to go and look through the entirety of jake's journal at times to look for the certain puzzle that you need to solve and where the answer was for it you didn't just have a journal boom there's the answer right there and puzzle was solved and it was really fun to solve them uh they just there you have the treasure again in this game and while it still feels kind of like not really something that you need to do it's really fun to go and explore and find the stuff that actually relates to like the nice gra to the um, setting and everything the ancient temples and whatnot it actually relates to it and makes it feel like it is supposed to be there it's supposed to be ancient treasure that you're finding and it some of it was actually a lot more difficult 
to find this time around. Again, you have different skins that you could equip, and this time you could actually get skins of like characters in Uncharted 1, and of course you still had all the different stuff that you could get as well. Typical, you know, Naughty Dog leveling up thing like Jack and Daxter. That's just what I like to compare it to, sorry. And other than that, gra gameplay wise, it was vastly improved. A lot of it was improved from Uncharted 1. While the combat system wasn't tweaked too much because they didn't want to completely change it like they did with Jack and Daxter, the Jack 2, where you're pl it's an action adventure platformer to it's a shoot 'em up uh, sandbox game, you know. They, they didn't want to change it that much, and they didn't. They didn't change most of anything with combat. They just improved on all of it, and it just feels nice that they did. Gameplay overall felt really nice. Of course, I can't forget to talk about the story of the game. Story overall was a lot better again than Uncharted 1. It was a lot more cinematic, a lot more uh, action packed, a lot more focused, a lot more just altogether uh, just better handled than Uncharted 1 was. You had a clear main beginning, middle, and end, even though it starts at the middle of the <laughs> game and then takes you back to the beginning but other than that it's really easy story to follow I still can remember everything that happens in the game to this day and after Drake has uh, found these different artifacts um, after being rescued by Sully he ventures to Nepal or I should say Borneo to go and find the location of this place where this dagger that he found fits to so that he can get something else. I can't remember exactly what it is right now. And eventually he runs into Elena Fisher again and her cameraman Jeff and uh, through certain sequence of events you do stuff and then Elena's cameraman Jeff gets shot and you are trying to carry him through the streets and everything but eventually Chloe has to double cross you again Lazarevich comes in and kills Jeff and it's like oh so much for Jeff right and you both you and Elena escape though and uh, manage to get and Drake manages with the help of Elena to get on a train that Lazarevich is sending up into the mountains into the Himalayas to go to Shambhala this of course leads to the sequence the uh, sequence at the beginning of the game in which Drake is shot by Flynn when trying to go and save Chloe and ends up in the same place we see him at the beginning of the game. However, this time once he he collapses in the snow in with the abdomen wound, but is rescued by a Tibetan named Tenzin, which I mentioned uh, earlier in the video, and there he's told by and Drake's having ideas of quitting, he giving up because he doesn't think that it's worth it to go and do this anymore to go after this treasure it's not worth it so this German uh, this former German soldier I can't remember his name at the moment uh, tasks uh, Nate with going to this one section of the mountains to find something with Tenzin and eventually they come across these dead Nazi soldiers and turns out of course the Nazis also tried to find the Chintamani stone and were attacked by these beasts that you find in this area of the game that are dang near immortal but are actually and their but their beast appearance is actually a camouflage for the actual people that are just guarding the Chintamani stone from keep, keeping anyone from actually getting near it anymore and that's what killed all these German explorers and or sorry German explorers were killed by this ger ex-German soldier that you met earlier to keep them from getting to the Chintamani stone. Eventually though, you go through the mountains, you go through these temples and everything, and you end up finding Shambhala and it looks fantastic. Just the size of the game is amazing. It looks freaking awesome. Eventually, uh, you go, you go, you go, you go, you find Flynn and Flynn ends up pulling the pin on this grenade and almost kills Elena and at that point Jake er, not Jake sorry Nate uh, goes to finally stop Lazarevich once and for all he and which leads into 
not only a better boss fight than Uncharted 1 in terms of just the actual fight itself, but a hard boss fight. Even on normal, this boss fight is brutally hard. It's really hard. You'll hear the same lines over and over again. You have to restart the boss every time you die, so there's, it's not super easy either. And it just really presents a nice challenge for the end of the game. And eventually, you kill Lazar, or Lazarevich is ambushed by all the guardians. He gets annihilated. You get out of the temple while it's, you get out of a Shambhala while it's crumbling to the ground, and you're like trying to run away and everything. You save Elena and everyone lives happily ever after and that's the end of Uncharted 2. Uncharted 2 made so many improvements to Uncharted 1 sometimes I really don't want to go back and play Uncharted 1 I'd rather just go straight into Uncharted 2 and then play Uncharted 3 and because really there's no point in playing Uncharted 1 except for you know just seeing the vast difference between the two games I mean because there's, yeah, there's really no point honestly and Uncharted 2 did so many things better, and to this day, and unless Uncharted 4 proves different, it's going to be my favorite Uncharted game of them all. It's so good, it's so amazing, everything is well so well refined that I think it's one of my favorite games of all time. And that's why I gotta say, guys, that Uncharted 2 gets a 10 out of 10. Yeah, guys, Uncharted 2 was a great game. You should definitely play it as soon as possible, especially since Uncharted 4 is coming out in a few days. I cannot wait. I'm so excited for that game. Uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I Yes, um, so Captain America Civil War, probably going to be getting that out uh after this video at least. I won't say days because I don't know when I'm going to actually upload any of this. So I'm just going to say after this video will probably be Captain America. And then after that probably Uncharted 4. And maybe a spoiler uh, talk about Civil War. And that's basically the lineup right now. I'm going to try and do those videos I mentioned. I will get around to it eventually. Especially since I won't have to worry about a ton of different stuff anymore. At least, there might be one or two games I review during the summer, but I'm not really... Since I'm going off to college next year, I don't want to spend a ton of money, you know. And that's about it. And I will definitely be having some more reviews up for you guys. And comment below if you liked Uncharted 2. What did you think about it? If you didn't like it, tell me what you thought about it as well. I'd really like to hear your opinions on that. And if you haven't played Uncharted 2 right now, what... Do you, do you think Uncharted 4 is going to be better or worse than Uncharted 2? Not necessarily bad, bad or good, but just is it going to get, like, everything better than Uncharted 3 did? <laughs> Especially compared to Uncharted 2. Well, I guess we'll see, but comment below what you think about that. And, guys, I want to thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.